Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. This one is really important information again, so if you haven't already, get your pen and paper ready. <laughs> you know, you should probably make notes of what your favorite videos are called somehow, and some, you know, at the time when you watch it, just write it, what time, oh, I might need that one day, and make a note of where it is. And look, when we get more time, we can do more for you and make the videos better. But this one's about strut spaces. Do you need strut spaces? understanding what they do, some of the problems they can cause, when you shouldn't use them, what's too much, and how you may think using one could be a solution to a problem but causing another problem, etc. So we'll quickly go through it. So obviously, normally, when we talk about a strut spacer, that's this here, right? So we've got one installed on one strut, right? That's your strut spacer. The manufacturer quotes that as five millimeters, right? Five millimeter spacer gives you 10 mil of lift. So let's just quickly explain that one so that you don't make the mistake of going, oh, I wanna go 20 mil higher, and you put a 20 mil spacer in. Because it's around about double. Whatever whatever the side thickness of the spacer is, right? It's around about double, okay? So be aware of that. Um, the reason that is, is if you think about it, now you need to have a basic understanding of um, car parts so you do need to watch all of our videos till the end because I'll be talking about things like lower control arms and I'll be pointing out checking those bushes and this is where I've said it before all the videos it's like a jigsaw puzzle right it's a billion piece jigsaw puzzle and you've only got about 500 pieces so far so make sure you subscribe and you've got the bell on or you'll be missing out this is your free education okay so the reason it doubles is the pivot point so the lower control arm that's the lower arm where the suspension uh, where the wheels connected to the vehicle and all the suspension the lower end of the strut up the other end of this down there that's connected to right so the pivot point that's connected to the vehicle moves the least right because it's the pivot point and it's like kind of like, it's a bit like leverage so the longer the arm the more movement you get at the wheel, right? You know, so it's a basic, this is why we went to primary school, guys. You know, grade five, grade six, grade four, that sort of thing. This sort of, if you were concentrating and not daydreaming, this is where you would have picked up those sort of basics. Um, if not, maybe sometime later on, or maybe you don't get it. So I'll try, that's why I'll try and explain it again clearly as I can in, you know, everyday non-technical terms, right? So just picture it, your wheel is what moves the most. That's the furthest point out, right? It's gonna go up and down, let's say, 150, 200 mil, right? Let's say 200 mil, just for a number. It goes up 100, down 100, right? And then you've got the middle point. But as you go in the arm to the pivot point, of course, that doesn't, it basically doesn't move, right? Or the, you know, right on the pivot point doesn't move. And the further you go up the arm, the more it moves. So halfway, if the end moved 200 mil, halfway along the arm, you know, mathematics, okay, uh, all those physics people and scientists, yeah, I know I'm probably not quite right, but about halfway along the arm is going to move about half as much. Now, I'll be looking in the comments for the experts on mathematics to tell me that is actually 100% correct. 50% of the way along moves 50% of the amount. Is that right or not? Yes or no? Please tell me and with your reasons why. Okay, so now that we've got that nailed, right, this shocker is... or strut or coil over whatever you want to call it we're going to call it whatever you call it you know what i mean three names basically shockers struts coil overs okay um that is mounted about halfway along the arm right so the arm's going like that right yeah like that yeah whichever way you want that's your arm going like that and your struts mounted there like that right so think of it right so this end back here is where it's not moving fingertips moving the most struts halfway along right so whatever you do at that strut there you're going to get twice as much right at the wheel okay so whatever you do here five mil ten mil at the wheel so that's the deal there so understand that however much you want to raise the vehicle you need to use a spacer half the size now do we recommend the use of strut spaces no is the short answer no now if you want to raise the vehicle, it depends on your suspension setup, right? Now that we've seen these with and without, I'm just going to spin one around so I can demonstrate. By the way, these are for a Hilux, a cancelled order. And if anybody wants a 
What was I going to do with this front? If anyone's a cheap set, you know, it's a cancel order, it doesn't matter, whatever. The springs, big lift, 318, C59318, big lift. So, yeah, Hilux, just about any Hilux. Shoot me a text message if you're interested. And I suppose that could go really bad, couldn't it? Um, you'd be texting me for the next 10 years if this video stays up. Uh, hmm, what are we going to do there? In the comments if you're interested, and then I'll say text me if they're still available. First person in, it gets first opportunity. Oh, you want to know how much? Oh, look, this is not what the video is about. That's about a thousand bucks worth there. They're about 275 each. Calls are about 270. You've got the strut tops, about 90 bucks each in assembly. It's about a grand bit over, plus freight. It's pickup only. Melbourne, Victoria, northwest side. I don't know. 700 bucks as it is. We'll take the coils off. We'll give you just the struts for, I don't know. 500, they're brand new, right? 500 bucks for the struts. Um, 150 for the coils, if you want the coils. It's top hats, I'm keeping them. I'll use them on another job. If I'm taking them apart, I'm keeping them, okay? So it's the whole thing. What did I say? 700. If you want just the struts, I'll do that. 500. If you want the coils, 150. There you go. Sorted. I don't care, first in. All right, now what was I going to demonstrate? Uh, see, I've totally mucked it up. Okay, so... Da -da -da -da. What am I demonstrating? Um, oh yeah, that's right. No. I'm going to turn it a bit more. I know where I was. I'm back to that train. I'm going to move it a little bit like that. Now, does that work? Can you see that? Yeah, you can. Okay. Look at this. This is rock solid. See how solid that is? Now, this is where I need an old strut. Which, let me see if I've got one. I think we've got rid of them all. Shocker there. No strut. No, I haven't got one. Bugger. Okay. Get underneath the front of your Prado or Hilux and have a look how pathetic the standard front suspension is. Now, when I say that, it's actually really good suspension for on-road and it lasts pretty well. It's it's good, okay? It's got good bushes. The bushes in the bottom of it, the OE ones, last the best. I've seen them at hundreds of thousands of Ks and they've got a slight squash there. They're in good nick. A lot of aftermarket ones, the majority, they go to pieces because they're rubbish. These Dobinson's ones are awesome as well. Just as good or better as OEM. Subject to the probably one in a thousand manufacturing fault where you'll have a problem so it or you put it on the ground I'm going to answer another question. Someone asked why is it important to tighten it up when it's on the ground? This is why guys Bushes have only got a certain amount of twist in it and I'm not going to tell you it's 30% or 30 degrees It's something along those lines But obviously depending on material and manufacturer it varies how much it's going to take Obviously the less you twist it the better if you and look these to be honest They don't twist much because you haven't got much travel and even if you did tighten it on the ground or in sorry in the air and drop it on the ground it's not i don't believe it's going to cause you any issues okay i really there's not enough twist there to cause a problem but the best thing you can do with all suspension components is tighten it on the ground because that's in a neutral position right because the crush it, the bolt and the mounting area is going to crush on this crush tube and it's locked in position unless it's loose <coughs> excuse me if it was loose then you get knocking noises because this actually can move a little bit on the bolt and sort of go knock knock as you're going over bumps and stuff like that so that's tight, neutral. That way when the suspension goes up or down, right, it can go either way. And you still, look, these are not, these bushes don't get damaged from that. The bushes that do get damaged are the lower, front lower control arm bushes, okay? They're the ones, guys, as I've demonstrated in other videos, they get seized. There'll be another video coming on that soon. That's why I'm going to say don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell on. Because we've done videos on front lower control arms before, so you can go and search those two videos. I got cut off with a call, so there's part one and part two. They only go for a few, to about two or three minutes each, so worth having a look at. Search Prado front lower control arm. Always search on my channel. All the answers are there, and if they're not, we're going to make a video like what we're doing now, right? So And see all this. The video is about strut spaces, but see how we're just throwing in all this other info. It could be a separate video, and we will, but it's important to talk about these bushes. The point I'm trying to make is, though, the standard suspension, this upright section here, I'm going off memory here, last time I measured one, I reckon it's about, well, it looks like 14 mil diameter, but it's probably, I think, about 15, maybe 16. And most upgraded suspension manufacturers will go to 18 or 19. I know it doesn't sound like much, but it's getting quite much bigger here. And what that means is, if you're bouncing around on the sand dune, so a couple of things that happen, right? So you, you gonna wreck your car so don't do that but if you are I'm going to the extremes right to give an extreme example you're on sand dunes sometimes you can't see that drop off and you sort of you might jump off it if you just need to slow down and not have that happen if you're jumping around you'll bend and break your car Toyotas will last the longest but you'll still break it bend it and do damage they don't do it 
Um, but what can happen is these uprights, the stock standard ones, because they're so small, they can, two things that can happen. They can bend, okay? So this part that goes up here, again, you've got to look under your car and you'll see those little twigs there. I like to call them twigs. This is rock solid, mate, you know? There's full on strength here. So what I'm trying to say is, if you've got suspension like this or anything like it, something with a decent strong upright, with 360 degree welds around there, it's pretty damn strong. But it's not just about it breaking and bending there. You're also twisting the whole strut and you can cause side wear on the shaft of the suspension, okay? You're gonna bend that shaft, okay? And then it's gonna wear on one side and then eventually you're probably gonna have problems like leaks and stuff like that. So be aware you need to choose the right stuff. It needs to be installed properly. It is pretty simple, but a, few, a couple of little mistakes, things that could be avoided, um, that's how you want to be. You want to avoid those little mistakes. That's why I keep saying watch it. We've got about, I don't know, five or ten videos on suspension. So search Prado, suspension, whatever on our channel, or Hilux, probably less on Hiluxes because mainly we're doing Prados. But, you know, we're supplying kits to everyone Australia-wide. Not everyone, but, you know, the people that, everyone that contacts us that wants that. Not fast. If you go direct to Dominson's, you can buy whatever brand you want. You can go buy ARB, OME if you want. It's all good. Um, it's not a sales pitch, I'm just telling you, if you do want this gear, we've been using it for years, happy to supply it to you, appreciate the support. So, if you've got something solid, long story short, you might get away with a spacer of something like 5 mil that would give you 10 mil, okay? You might get away with that. I'm not going to say you will, I'm not the engineer. What you've got to understand is when this fully compresses, which with a spring like this, it's going to be a lot harder for it to fully compress. So, it's probably not going to see the bump stops. And then you've got people that are going to put in the point or the argument that the bump stops should possibly be increased when you raise the vehicle, depending on the closed lengths of the shockers and stuff like that. That's kind of right. But as I said, because they're so heavy duty, you're not usually going to fully compress it. And if you are, you should be out on a track. If it's the front, you're going to be going down a hill. You've got all the weight on the front. There's going to be some big holes. It's really going to flex up and you will slowly fully compress that. But I would suggest that this spring is probably going to be maxed out before there's much pressure on the bump stop. The problem you got is when you put a spacer, it takes the bump stop further away, okay? I'm not going to try and explain it to you here. I need diagrams, demonstration. That's why we have tech days. You can come in and have a look and ask questions and learn these sorts of things. But um, basically, this has pushed everything further down. Your bump stop's up here, right? So as you push everything down, you've taken it away from the bump stop. So if you put a 5mm spacer, you've given it 10 mil more height, you've taken it 10 mil away from your bump stop. So if you've got the stock standard suspension, for some reason you just want to raise it 10 mil, you put a spacer in, you'll probably be right, especially if you're gentle with the vehicle, even if you do nothing. But if somehow you increase that bump stop by the same amount, and that's not the end of the problem, you know, you've got your open and closed links in your shock strut as well. So it gets complicated, but you'd probably be right. I'm not going to be the guy that said everything's okay and then you go and do it, and Anthony said so. I'm telling you, I don't like strut spaces, right? But I know vehicles that have got, I wouldn't go more than that. I wouldn't put a 10 mil spacer for a 20 mil lift, unless you had something like this. If you had something like this, mate, but you don't need to. See this, something like this is adjustable, right? That's where you spend your money, you get your quality ride, you get something that can handle the Outback Australian corrugations, right? And you can adjust, oh, you want it a bit higher? Well, you've got to take the pressure off the spring and you undo these and you adjust the height to what you want, right? So the last little tip, and probably not the last, but be aware when you adjust the height, don't think you can measure up your vehicle on perfectly flat ground then go, okay, I just want another 10 mil at the front and then adjust this spring seat five mil. Remember, it's the same process as that. Whatever you want at the wheel, you do half here, right? But by doing so, let's say you had a vehicle that was, I don't know, let's say for some reason you wanted to get an extra 30 mil at the front. I want to go 30 mil higher. Don't think that by adjusting this 15 mil, you're going to end up with exactly 30 mil. Other factors need to be taken into account because as you raise the vehicle, it shifts the weight front or rear, depending on what you're adjusting. And then by shifting the weight, it also adds or subtracts to the height you're going to have, right? So it does get complicated. It's easy to make mistakes. So if you've got someone experienced with this, they'll get it pretty good, get it right the first, second, third time, but it can, you can be there mucking around a lot. And if people have to redo and readjust these, there's a bit of work involved, so they do deserve to get paid for their time. Please don't expect them to do it for free. Obviously, if it's part of a job and it happens straight away, it's gonna be fairly cheap compared to if you come back three years later 
and you've added a bull bar and a winch and a bash plate and a battery and a light bar and some antennas and some spotties and anything else you can think of a fuel filter and a catch can had <laughs> to say the catch can and the fuel filter you know and a bigger battery and a dc charger and an auto cooler they look like small things but all adds to weight at the front so and then you're gonna go oh these springs have sagged no dobinson springs don't sag okay sag is that's the standard height we take it out we put it on the bench it's meant to be 400 long and it's 380 then it sag doesn't happen with all i'm going to say is it doesn't happen with dobinson springs i don't see that okay um what it is is you've added more weight it hasn't sagged that's a sag spring it hasn't sagged it's been lowered you've lowered it you know you've added weight that the vehicle that's not really sagged wrong word okay so be careful where you call it sag please call it the vehicle's too low now because i've added weight or you know of course it settles from what it is on day dot uh, a couple of weeks later it might be 10 mil lower depending it's going to settle twice as much at the front as the rear for the reasons we explained the double thing right so because the spring right anyway i think that's answered the question about strut spaces whether you should use them or not, on what suspension, how thick you should go, and some of the problems that can happen. And the main problem is on the stock stuff or the aftermarket stuff they haven't upgraded much, it's still got quite a small upright on some brands. Um, the problem with the stock one as well, where this upright pin, besides being small, it's only got two little welds at each side. It's kind of like, you know, it's, it's at each side. So you can sort of see out of the small shaft that might be I don't know, 15 mil or something, 14, 15. It, it tapers off, it gets smaller at the bottom. So it seems like about 14 mil. It seems really small. That's the whole weight of the vehicle riding on that little piece of steel. I'm not a fan of it. Toyota, if you're listening, let's just upgrade those front struts to about, I don't know, 18 mil, right? 18 mil thick down to the bottom and do a 360 degree weld, right? Let's talk to Toki Call. That's who does your suspension and say, guys, can we upgrade that material size just a little bit and get the weld 360? Anthony will be much happier okay and then i'll be saying yeah you can leave those there get the life out of those you can even put a slightly taller spring on them and reuse the same factory struts it's going to save yourself a heap of money or, you know i'm into value for money rather you do that and save waste get this gear when you need it um so yeah i don't know see the information just keeps coming out i reckon we're done 17 minutes that about does you guys usually so i'll remind you again more awesome information coming your way so don't forget if you think i've earned your subscription subscribe turn the bell on so you don't miss out on that next important bit of information give us a thumbs up if you got something out of that thumbs up to you thanks for your support and i'll be looking in the comments for whatever i said at the start of the video i can't remember go back to that if you can't remember either thanks for your support guys see ya